Greetings everybody and welcome to Zimbabwe Daily. My name is Yvonne Mchaka and I do hope I find all of you well. Welcome back to our live broadcast right here on Zimbabwe Daily. This is Behind the Mic, our live talk show in which we are talking the cost of accidents, preventing danger through safety procedures in the movement of liquid petroleum gas products from procurement to end users. And in the studio today, I'm joined by a safety and health expert, Mr. Mpunga. Please greet the viewers. Hello viewers. Uh, thank you, Yvonne, for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. We just had to doll up in all these masks, you know, having a, a, a health expert in, in, in our midst, they're telling us that the distance is not a, a you know, big enough. Yes, it's it's not the one meter uh, apart, which I think we are not <laughs> doing too bad. But the masks will cover us uh, in terms of COVID exposure. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Yvonne, for having me. Awesome. Now, when we are talking about um, safety and health issues around LPG, what exactly are we looking at? Okay. So first and foremost, there is the aspect of compliance. This is the process uh, that um, wholesalers, importers, retailers go through, right. uh, which looks at the hazards associated with the location in which the LPG uh, will be um, sold or stored. But when we start talking safety, health and environment, we're going beyond the compliance aspect, which is regulated by ZERA, EMA, Mm -hmm. uh, and the local fire offices. We're now talking about the operations at a particular outlet. We're now talking about the safety of the customer. We're now talking about the impact on general community when things go wrong. So it's a much broader scope than the general compliance aspect. Right. So today we are talking preventing danger through safety uh, procedures in the movement of LPG product product from procurement to end user. Now, um, during your presentation at the ended uh, LPG safety conference, you spoke on the need for me as a worker within that field to know and understand that I am safe. You also spoke, like you've just said right now, about the customers, those that come to those places. And indeed, we have, um, we've had Emma come through and telling us about the procedures for registration and stuff like that. When we are talking uh, safety from uh, the transportation uh, system and stuff, what exactly are we talking about? This is liquefied petroleum gas. How is it transported from point A to point B? And how am I protected? Okay. So in terms of the transport, uh, all LPG is import into Zimbabwe and most, if not all, is brought in via road tanker. Right. So you'll find that uh, importers will go and collect the LPG at the refinery uh, or the storage facility, whether it be in South Africa, Tanzania, Mozambique, or Zambia. Uh, and in essence, at the point of collection, you'll find they've got quite robust safety processes mm -hmm. that are involved in terms of loading the LPG within the tanker. Now, of course, the tankers have to be roadworthy as they travel from Zimbabwe to wherever they are collecting the LPG and return. So you get that monitoring aspect. Uh, the tankers themselves have to be inspected and regularly checked to ensure compliance in terms of the integrity of the tankers themselves and also the roadworthiness. But beyond that, we're now looking at the drivers of those trucks. We're now looking at the fatigue management aspect where they are traveling a very long distance uh, to collect the LPG uh, in between, for example, we previously had uh, uh, delays at the borders. Mm -hmm. So it means you've got individuals that are now camping in their trucks longer than they normally would. So the safety aspects uh, in regards to that. Uh, and when they return back to Zimbabwe, they have to offload this LPG within the storage facilities, uh, wherever they may be, whether it be Harare or wherever in the country. Mm. Uh, and at those sites, you also have got safety responsibilities that come with it in terms of offloading the LPG uh, into existing uh, or storage tanks, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to 
some of these facilities, uh, they are all sellers or customers that come and buy there. So we're now looking at managing uh, those individuals that are coming on site. You have people that work on site, the contractors themselves. Uh, so all those aspects have to be looked at. Right. Uh, and in terms of the long route of travel, obviously the drivers must have sufficient rest um, throughout the journey. Right. And you also spoke about accidents and incident in terms of LPG uh, management. Maybe you'd want to tell our viewers a little bit on that. Okay. So I guess these are two words that are generally interchangeable, mm -hmm. uh, incidents and accident. Uh, but for clarity's sake, the difference becomes an incident is when something happens, mm -hmm. but there's actually no damage, uh, no impact to the environment or no injury to to someone. So for example, in basic terms, a card box in the kitchen shelf has fallen. It missed no one, the, dam the box wasn't damaged, mm -hmm. that's an incident. But when we talk of an accident, there's now a cost attached to it. We're now we're saying that box in the kitchen at home is dropped, it is either hit someone, they are in pain, uh, or whatever is in the box is damaged. That becomes the difference. The accident, something has actually taken place. Mm. And there's a cost we can actually attach to it. Right. And have we had such um, accidents here in Zimbabwe, in Africa, or globally that involved LP gas? Okay. So globally, uh, yes, there's been incidents. I think the worst LPG incident was in Mexico, I think sometime in the 80s. I don't recall the exact dates. And a lot of people died. There are a lot of people injured in terms of bins. Uh, here in Africa, there's been cases in South Africa, in Nigeria. And when we come home, there was an incident in Chinoy. I think I presented that uh, during the uh, mm -hmm. last association meeting. Uh, but there's been several more. I think if you go through the papers or online, you'll see that there's been a history of these incidents. And fair to say, we've been reasonably fortunate um, that there hasn't been serious injury or fatalities associated with those but we've been close. Right. And um, when we're talking, um, you know, you, you, you spoke about um, the tankers being inspected and stuff like that. But how about um, the storage facilities like here in Zimbabwe? Mm -hmm. I think when uh, LP gas was introduced at some point, there was a lot of negativity around it because of the many accidents mm -hmm. that took place in a particular season. But come come through coming through to around 2008 onwards, we've seen an increase in the number of people not just selling it but using it uh, in the homes. And um, how's our storage facilities like in Zimbabwe? And um, what is it that we expect to see in those places? Because some, someone just brings a tank and puts it there and they're selling gas. And because we want gas closer to us, we just go and buy and stuff like that. But what should we be aware of as uh, consumers? Because I think um, the problem that we've heard and that we've seen around is people not taking an interest in some of these things. And maybe the issue begins to be raised when there has been an accident. But how about now as a consumer, I know the red flags, I know what to expect, for example, from somebody who is selling gas, mm -hmm. the kind of uh, storage facilities that they should have. Mm -hmm. um, what should Zimbabweans be looking out for so that they know that I'm safe, you're safe, everyone's safe? Okay, so I guess uh, first and foremost, LPG is a clean energy source. It's a very safe, energy source, mm -hmm. uh, but only if you respect it. If you right. disrespect it, then it can take you through a few lessons. So the things to look out for, uh, I guess before I go into those specifics, from a compliance perspective, look if wherever you want to buy the LPG, if they are licensed. Now, right. what that license tells you is that firstly, they've received the inspection from the fire authority. Subsequently, they received the inspection from EMA, the Environmental Management Authority, mm -hmm. and finally, ZERA was mandated uh, with enforcing uh, or compliance uh, of the LPG sector. Now, they will cover the bare basics right. of what's required at a facility. So that's ensuring there's a fire guard, ensuring that the operator is trained, uh, ensuring that there's emergency escape to entrances and the like. 
But beyond that, and I think this is where it starts to become important and where you start seeing variations between each operator. Mm -hmm. We've got different types of equipment. Yes, they are all tanks, but we've got different sizes of tanks. Right. For example, a 48 kg tank and a one ton tank, the requirements and operational needs are going to be different. You also have handheld pumps and you also got electric pumps. So those variations start to come in. But when you look at it, just your initial engagement with the air by saving your gas mm. should indicate to you the level of safety within the place. Mm. The structure at the facility should also show you uh, where you are. So, for example, if you find someone with a cylinder tipped upside down, mm -hmm. you should be worried. If there's no barrier <laughs> oh around, my God. <laughs> if there's no barrier around where you are buying the LPG and there's just tanks right. uh, and we are pouring gas on the scale, then you should also be asking yourself, is this the appropriate location to be looking at? And why is that important? You've got fittings, for example, that connect to your tank. Mm -hmm. So if your tank comes, and I think this is, uh, we hear about this a lot, whereby they say, tank mm -hmm. a pressure, at that very moment, we are releasing LPG into the atmosphere. Right. Now let's say someone comes with a naked flame, smoking cigarettes. There's no fence, there's no signage around it. Someone happens to be walking past, and at that very moment, we are releasing LPG. Chances are we're going to end up with a fire. So mm -hmm. those things start to become important. The signage that tells you no smoking, no cell phones, all those things play a part in terms of the safety. Um, so fencing, basic barriers, uh, and then just the tank itself. Mm -hmm. Your tank should be clean. Right? It's common to see people come with their tanks from home when they are cooking the splatter from the pots of oil and fat and other debt. Yeah. That debt builds up on the tank. Now, at the outlet, it may not so much be an issue, but at your home when you operate that LPG, it can be an issue. So oh, out how, how, how can it be? <laughs> or fat oils burn. Okay. So if you have a buildup of debt onto your tank and a buildup of uh, oil that is attached to it, mm. you have a mistake that happens or in the process of lighting your LPG, or if you have a leak uh, and it catches fire, you've got a propellant. Uh, for fire there. So to me, a trained operator should be able to tell their customer that you need to keep your tank clean. And there's right. a matter of courtesy. Right. Why don't they just clean the tank <laughs> and explain to you what that debt can do uh, in terms of when you're using the LPG. Uh, beyond that, I mean, we've got the situation of COVID. Uh, so COVID management becomes important in terms of the physical distancing, mm -hmm. the wearing of masks, uh, now, some of those things become difficult mm. to control at an outlet, but just having a bucket of water for customers to wash hands, remember, we're going to exchange uh, money. Money, tanks, yes. everything. We're <laughs> going to use the swipe machine. Right. Uh, so, you know, to me, an, a, an outlet or a retail center that is serious about safety is going to have those controls in place. Right. Sort of cover, then you need those are red flags, you need to know what you're dealing with. So, we're talking safety issues around the management of LP gas. LP gas, no gas, remember, so people have resorted to LP gas for cooking and sometimes for lighting our fridges and stuff. So we are bringing this program courtesy of the uh, Liquefied Petroleum Gas Safety Association of Zimbabwe, who feel that it's important for our consumers, it's important for our retailers to understand the safety issues around management of gas. In the studio, we've been talking to the safety and health expert, uh, Mr. Fungai Mpunga, he was telling us why it's important to handle our uh, tanks and even the workers that drive those tankers from the different places. Remember, we are importers of LP gas. Why are we importers of LP gas? We can't make it here? No, you can't. It comes out of a refinery process. So currently, there's no refinery that produces LPG locally. Um, but there's refineries outside in South Africa, at Sasso, for example, or Engine, 
Uh, and then also some is imported in Mozambique via tanker, the shipping tankers. Uh, I believe they bring some and offload into a storage facility there. Right. I've seen people trying to um, to use the septic toilets uh, to make gas. Okay. <laughs> I mean, right. is that something? So that, that's different from LPG. Okay. It's still gas. Okay. But that's biogas. Ah, so, I see. And that is gas generated. It's methane gas that comes from, uh, I guess, rotting material. Right. Uh, okay. And we can use that for cooking as well. Right. Thanks for that clarity. Because, <laughs> really, you know, you're always wondering why do we keep on importing things when we can actually do something, create things in our own. But all the same, uh, thank you, Mr. Mpunga. I think I've been educated. I've been helped. Guys, don't keep oils on your gas tanks. Get is Mpunga is smart, so but you can also get it smart, right? You that you need to clean your gas tanks so that we are all safe. Imagine kuka puti kapambara apaka na ushtungiza kusiu. Zimbabwe do zaga bata na nae. So if it affects you, it's going to affect your neighbor. So let's try by all means to be safe. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mpunga, for making this time and educating us on safety issues around gas. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Excellent. We thank the Liquefied Petroleum Gas Safety Association of Zimbabwe for bringing us this show. And uh, we thank all of you for tuning in. I hope you have picked one or two things. This is Behind the Microphone, a program that brings you those issues that are not given the limelight but are equally important. We were talking the cost of accidents. My name is Yvonne Muchaka. Have yourselves a pleasant rest of day.